possible that Phaedra does feel threatened, and it also is possible that it's an act. No one likes you, Barbity. You can be in this game together, but you're gonna play fair. Don't you have more problems at the Phaedra's? I'm playing very fair with you, both of you. I am here for Phaedra. Dan and Poverty are out of their league. They didn't realize who they were messing with when they started playing game around Phaedra. And now Phaedra is going to school them and I cannot wait. I hope she's able to take one of them out because th Dan chose Poverty thinking he could manipulate her and he thought Phaedra would just go along with whatever he was doing because I remember when they were trying to kill Sheree, he said, oh, well, Phaedra will just have to put up with it. Now she's warned him. Shots have been fired. Let's see where they go. Hey there, thanks for stopping by, it's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'll be reviewing The Traitor, Season 2, Episode 5. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos, and definitely leave a comment. I'm really going to try to be not very excited or very excitable, but hey, it is what it is. I love The Traitor, I really do. Um, So you have, you know... um. Finally, poverty chooses a victim and she goes and she poisons Ekensu. And I thought Ekensu was smarter than that. So the idea that she would drink from a glass without actually looking doesn't make sense. And everybody kept looking at poverty. So for them not to suss out that poverty is a traitor doesn't make sense. It looked too fake. It looked too staged. So the idea that e nobody at all noticed it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. So anyway, everybody goes to sleep. And then in the morning, you have Dan and Phaedra be the first ones to breakfast. And Phaedra, obviously, Phaedra was smart out of all the traitors because she knew this was going to be done in plain sight. So she wanted to remain in the shadows. So she volunteered to sit back and let Dan and Poverty choose who they wanted to kill. And Dan, because he's so excited about killing everyone, didn't stop to think that why is Phaedra sitting back? So when they go to breakfast, she doesn't know who's been killed. Dan says he doesn't know who's been killed. And then the next person to come in is Poverty. And she lets everybody know it's Ekensu. Which makes um, Phaedra anxious. Because she voted for Ekensu in line with Maxim. Because of the f fight that Ekensu had with Janelle. But, you know, I don't think Poverty was thinking about that. I think she just thought of the easiest person for her to target. Who would take a sip of her glass without actually thinking twice about it. Um, so then Janelle comes in with Bergie and it's like she's excited to see Phaedra because she says she really likes Phaedra. So if Phaedra went home, she'd be heartbroken. And it's like, well, Phaedra is the biggest traitor in that castle. Why can't you see that? Why, why, why? She must be doing an amazing job. So everybody then turns up, up until, you know, it's Ekensu left uh, with Sandra and John. And so... When Ekensu t turns up, the the traitors are shocked because they expected her to be dead. They expected her to be gone. They didn't expect her to come down for breakfast and to sit down with them and have breakfast with them. I think Ekensu already knew she was going home. Or I think she eventually figured out that she is the one who had drunk the poisonous drink. I don't know whether she's allowed to say who poisoned her. Um, you then have Sandra come in with Kevin. And for people to keep saying Kevin is one of the dumbest people. Why? 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 How dumb is he? On his show, he's considered to be dumb. Now they're saying he's dumb. How dumb is he? But anyway, I like him. Um, and then John is the last person to come in. So everybody is there. And people, the traitors sort of can't compute. Why is Ekensu here if we killed her? But then it was said it's a poison and it could be slow. And they wouldn't know when she would eventually die. Um, Alan then comes in and he says, you know, the traitors kill, gave someone poison and that person will die by the end of the challenge today and we will find out who it is and dress appropriately. I remember CT had said that he wished one of the Bravo people would die, but I think Phaedra is going to try and protect Sheree for as long as she can. I don't know about her relationship with the other housewives, whether she's going to try and protect them. But I also have a feeling that she's going to try and protect CT because she really likes CT. It's interesting because after breakfast, you have people sitting in groups sort of trying to dissect what happened the night before and who they think was poisoned. And the fact that 
there were a lot of people when Ekintu was given a drink and nobody caught it out. It doesn't make sense to me because people like Janelle were sitting there. People like MJ were sitting there watching, you know, poverty move around with this little chalice and they didn't suss it out that something is not right. It doesn't make sense. And Ekintu, for her to not say that I was given a drink by poverty doesn't make sense unless the producers told her you cannot reveal who gave you a drink. And so I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't know how they're going to find out who actually did the poisoning. And for Dan to pull poverty aside, this now makes sense why he chose poverty. He thought he would be able to manipulate poverty because he knew he couldn't manipulate Phaedra. For him to want to set up Phaedra to take the fall when the time comes doesn't make sense. He doesn't know who he's messing with. He doesn't know who he's messing with. And I hope he's voted out before he has the opportunity to say what he wants to say or to try and get Phaedra out because Phaedra hasn't done anything to him. I hope Phaedra learns about this and I hope she's able to sort of cut him down at the knees before he gets a chance to try and take her out because I don't think he's that much of a, that good a game player and I think he thinks he is running the house when he's actually not and I hope people continue to suspect him. I hope Larissa is able to call him out at the next sort of round table and people vote him out and expose him as a traitor. One thing Alan is going to do, Alan is going to be extra, 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 extra. So they assemble in front of the castle. Everybody's dressed in black because obviously it's a funeral procession and one of them is going to die at the end. And there are three stops that they're going to stop at and people are going to be getting on the carriage. And the more people they can get on the carriage, the more likely they are to win the $20,000. And so obviously first up is the people who are able to win the, the shield, the three people. So they get on the carriage, which is good. Next up, they get to a stop where it says anyone who's born in the same year. So you have Dan and Kevin. Apparently, they're the same age. Although Kevin looks way younger than than Dan, it doesn't make sense given the fact that Dan has won all this money. Why does he look? Why does he look older? You'd expect him to look younger, but hey, it is what it is. Sandra and and Laris were born in the same year and you can see the difference one of them hasn't aged very well and it's like mm, it is what it is i love phaedra she's here for this Le phaedra loves the theatrics just as much as alan and the fact that she's talking about the fact that she runs a funeral home so she's at home at the moment I like the fact that she's also strategic in the sense that she's always looking out to make sure that she doesn't appear suspicious especially given the fact that ekensu is the one who's been killed Next up, there's this creepy looking choir singing and it's sort of talking about Johnny Bananas that who did he trust the most? Obviously, he would have trusted people from the challenge because he's known them for decades, like he's known City for 20 years. So he would trust City over people that he's met on the show, irregardless of whether they're best friends. And City is saying, if Johnny Bananas didn't say me, then he deserves to die. <laughs> and it's like, I love City. And so the fact that the two of them are saved is amazing. And I'm happy that City is safe, even though I already knew it. I swear to God, Phaedra is going to kill me on this show with laughing. Because next up, they're asked, you know, all the people that were ran through the fields in red, you know, they need to come forward. And so they all step forward. It's John, um, Phaedra, Sheree, and Bergie. And so Ekansu is now suspecting that she's the one who's dead. She's the one. And I think she knows it. And so it's cute to see the theatrics with Phaedra. Phaedra deserves an Oscar for this show. She really does because of how she's able to keep it together. And for Dan to say, oh, you know, I hope uh, Poverty and Phaedra are doing a good job. And it's like, what do you think? If you think you're going to take out Phaedra, you're in for a rude awakening. She's going to take you out before you, t you get a chance to take her out. One thing about Alan is he's always going to be extra. Everybody was asked to vote for the person they thought was going to be killed off and everybody chose MJ and then once everybody had voted, so depending on their vote, they could win 20k or they could lose 20k. So Alan then revealed who had been killed off and it turns out it was Ekensu and he immediately shut the coffin. I think it was to stop her from saying something because they knew that Ekensu would have shouted who killed her if they gave her the opportunity. So everybody's thrown off. Everybody's thrown off because they don't understand how Ekensu is the one who ended up being killed off. And 
the guy from The Bachelor is speaking up too much, in my opinion. I think his name is Peter or something. I think he's speaking up too much. I think he needs to keep quiet because his, people are going to become suspicious of him. But then at the same time, if they become suspicious of him, then he can go home. Because I think at on a trailer, he was sort of trying to point fingers at Phaedra. And I really don't like that. I want Phaedra to stay till the end. I want either her or CT to win the money at the end of the day. So, you know, everybody says their goodbyes and they walk off and people are thrown off because they don't understand why Ekensu was killed off. They don't realize that Shirei is the one who was actually supposed to be killed off, but Ekensu was just a stray bullet and sadly, she's gone. So you now have people come back to the castle and they're sort of talking and sort of trying to dissect what's happened and find out who is responsible for Ekensu's death. And so I don't know why people don't take Larsa seriously because she keeps pointing at Dan. She keeps pointing at Dan. And for poverty to bring up Larsa, poverty is doing Dan's dirty work and she doesn't realize it. Dan will throw her to the wolves when and if the time comes. And I don't know why she's prepared to do his dirty work because he's not going to sit there and watch her win the money, irregardless. So you have the housewife sort of having a conversation on who they think is the traitor and they decide to go to the board and they do a process of elimination, which makes sense. I understand them thinking CT is a traitor because of how strong he is, but CT would never have taken Johnny Bananas out first because he's known Johnny Bananas for 20 years. He would have taken out all the other guys, but he would never have taken out Johnny Bananas. So the idea that he took out Johnny Bananas doesn't make sense to me. I have a feeling if CT was a traitor, he would have taken Johnny Bananas to the end. He would rather he or Johnny won the money than anybody else. And so the fact that Sandra then took it and ran with it and was telling Dan and Kevin to say, we need to vote Larsa out. We need to vote because she is protecting CT and she's going to do anything and everything to protect CT. And I like the fact that people want to protect him. I'm so happy about that. And then you have Larsa meet up with CT in the corridor and she's sort of saying to him, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you. And it's like, why have you suddenly turned from Dan? Go back to your original target. Leave CT alone. Who are these people taking out? Because, oh my God, the round table has me on the edge of my seat. Um, So, you know, you have Janelle talk about uh, how, you know, um, Larissa made this toast at Marcus's death that, oh, uh, to cheers to Marcus. So she could have poisoned somebody. And it's like, how would she poison people if she didn't know where people were going to sit? She was one of the first people to come in. So how would she know where the rest of you were going to come in and sit down? And besides, everybody was there. They would have seen her poison them. That doesn't make sense. And then Larsa decides to target CT. And it's like, why would CT kill these people? He doesn't need to kill. CT is very strategic. He's a very sort of intelligent young man who is able to sort of look at the big picture and he needed people like Johnny Bananas in order to win more money. So why would he take them out and leave people that are not contributing anything towards the price pot? That doesn't make sense. And then obviously I like that Kevin spoke up and said, no, or, you know, I don't think it's CT. I think it's somebody else. And then you have MJ speaking up and is like, oh my God, this round table has me on the edge of my seat. I am here for this. And Dan Fedra is sitting there, you know, watching like she's watching people pay, play tennis from one side to the other. Whereas Dan is trying to avoid looking at people and it's like, this is how you're going to get called out. You're very suspicious and you think you're doing an amazing job. It's really sad. Uh, poverty is out of her league when it comes to Phaedra. Poverty is from Survivor. Phaedra is very strategic. She's highly intelligent. She's a very highly educated young lady. She's very social. She's also got street smarts. So for poverty to try and come for Phaedra, no love. You're in kindergarten and you're trying to fight with people in high school or people in college or university. Take your seat somewhere. You you can never, you can never beat Phaedra. And I like the fact that she sh Phaedra fired shots back at the round table in front of everybody because Phaedra told her, we are not a clique. I've only worked with Tamara and Sheree. Otherwise, I have never worked with Larissa. I'm not a part of a clique. And don't try and bring up the high source thing because don't make it a thing when it's not a thing. Otherwise, don't do it. And she called her poverty, sort of telling her that don't, don't start fire if you know you can't put it out because I'm ready. I'm always on the go. 
And it's like maybe poverty needs to watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, the previous seasons when Phaedra was there, and she needs to watch Married to Medicine and see how Phaedra moves because Phaedra is not one to be played with, and it's a pity she's dancing out of her league because Phaedra will read her for fulfilled. Phaedra will burn her. She's, you know, out of her league. The voting for me, part of it didn't make sense. I think people give Kevin a lot of credit for them to say he's an actor. He's never said he's an actor, unless he's an actor and he's never mentioned it on, on Bling Empire. So he and uh, Larissa got um, uh, more votes. John only got one, CT got one, and it didn't make sense, the voting. It really didn't make sense. I don't know how they're able to get the scent of Dan, but anyway, Poverty was able to do that. And Sandra was able to win because she was able to make sure that a gamer wasn't taken out of the game, and that was her goal. Um, And for me, I think Sandra would have been a better, you know, villain, would have been a better traitor with Phaedra than Dan. Dan, sorry, thinks he's bigger than he is. I think he thinks he's on Big Brother where he ran the show and this is not Big Brother, uh, which is a pity. So Loris is the one who's voted out and she reveals that, you know, she wasn't a traitor. She's actually a faithful. And you can see that the, the housewives are not happy. The housewives are not happy because they knew she wasn't a traitor and for her to be voted out and for poverty to put suspicion on the housewives doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for me, in my opinion. And so I don't know what they can do to turn this boat around, but I think people need to stop being so egotistical and actually need to actually look for facts and actually need to look around them and see what's happening. Um, Alan reveals that one more person is going to be killed by the traitors tonight, which is sad, but hey, it is what it is. So everybody goes to bed and I think Dan and Poverty didn't realize that they were playing in the kiddie pool and they had suddenly found themselves in the ocean with, unable to swim because Phaedra read them for filth and she drew the battle line so they... They know where they stand. And she told Poverty, nobody likes you. They think you're a traitor. So don't go there with me because I just need to open the door and they will walk through. They will follow. So please don't. Because Phaedra has good relationships with most of the people in the villa. She's managed to play under the radar. And so for Poverty to try and sort of poke her. She's poking the bear. And now the bear's woken up. And the two of them are taken aback because they thought they could run rings around Pedra. They didn't re realize who they were playing with. And I'm here for this and I can't wait for it. And I hope the two of them understand because she told uh, Poverty, I just don't mean you. I mean you, the two of you. You need to play fair. Otherwise, if you're not playing fair, I am going to show you what's what. And it's like, you don't know who you're messing with. Maybe you should have watched The Real Housewives before you came onto the show. Before you started playing games with Phaedra. You could get away with anything. With La with maybe, you know, Tamara. Or you could get away with something with Sheree. But Larissa and Phaedra are in a different league. Phaedra is one of the best housewives out there. And don't play with her. She will read you for filth. She will read you for filth. And she'll run game around you. And you won't realize what you're doing. I think they underestimated Phaedra. They didn't know who they were messing with. And now they're shook to the core. And I hope she's able to bring them out. I think they're going to now want to get Phaedra out because they realize they can't manipulate her. I think this is why Dan brought in poverty because he thought he could manipulate her. And I hope, if nothing else, everybody else saves Phaedra and takes out either Dan or poverty. And then they're left with their wings clipped and nowhere to go. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode um, 4. Bye guys.